For most introverts, social situations can be intimidating and downright frightening. And if you're like me, you may prefer to keep to yourself and take comfort in the safety of your own home. But there's no need to feel like you're missing out on the fun when you can use your unique traits to become even more charming. In this video, you learn how to be charming as an introvert while still staying comfortable in your own skin. Are you an introvert struggling to navigate social situations? Do you feel like introversion has gotten in the way of making new friends or charming others? Well, you aren't alone. Today's video was inspired by this quote by Betty Cornell in her book, Glamour Guide for Teens, written in 1958. If you say, I don't care, and start putting that philosophy into practice, you will find that you start retreating from life. You will withdraw into a shell until people will have a hard time deciding whether you are truly you or just an oyster. Human beings only talk to people who are willing to talk with them in return. They will only warm up to people who show that they have warmth to respond. If you want to be a human being, then you have to stop being an oyster and come out of your shell. Contrary to popular belief, your introversion can be a powerful tool of charm. It's actually possible to be quiet and reflective and still be charismatic. In this video, we'll explore some common misconceptions about introverts and, in, and examine some of the best ways for you to use your introversion to your advantage that will help you become a successful and charming person in social situations and perhaps make meaningful and lasting connections with others. What is an introvert? Well, before we get into the meat, let's talk about a common misconception about introversion. Being an introvert doesn't mean that you're shy. While there's still some debate over the official definition of an introvert personality type, broadly speaking, an introvert is typically someone who is more introspective and needs some quiet time and space to be alone in order to recharge. I personally am an off the scale introvert. Really, I am. People are always shocked to learn that I am an introvert because I seem so friendly and outgoing. Much of my work in higher education was spent in public speaking. Uh, introversion is often mistaken as shyness, but it actually is a preference for alone time due to our greater sensitivity to stimulation. The problem we get into is that a lot of times people mistake introverts need for solitude as aloofness or snobbishness. So if you're like me and view solitude as self-preservation, how do you counteract that image? First, by recognizing that being an introvert is not a bad thing. Our culture is geared towards extroverts, but instead of trying to force ourselves to be fake and extroverts, we can lean into some of our introvert related traits. Tapping into these natural instincts is a good thing when it comes to being a charming introvert. I know from experience because they have allowed me to be a people person introvert. And I want to reiterate this point. You can use your quiet demeanor to your advantage. People are often drawn to quiet people because they appear mysterious or intriguing. So let's dive into the power of introverts while also addressing ways to fine tune, fine tune them for social interactions. Introvert power number one, introverts are excellent listeners. I don't know about you, but I get so very frustrated when I'm trying to carry on a conversation with someone who is constantly interrupting me or not listening. The fact of the matter is that people want to feel like they have been heard. In too many conversations, the receiver is thinking about he or she is going to respond instead of actually listening to what someone is saying. Heck, people make gobs of money teaching workshops on how to effectively communicate. And the first activity usually revolves around learning how to be a good listener. Introverts are naturally active listeners. 
we pay close attention to what the other person is saying so that we can ponder it for just a moment before we respond. And if you're empathic like me, you listen not just with your mind, but with your whole body so that you can hear between the words. Our body language, smiling face, and eye contact are little things we can do to let the other person know that we are great listeners. In almost every vintage advice book I have on how to be charming, the authors tell us that we need to really listen to others to be good conversationalists. Introverts have that covered. Lean into your natural listening skills. Just remember that as introverts, we prefer deep conversations, which is why a social gathering where our extroverted peers are happy to make small talk can feel so draining to us. And this is where we can come off as being aloof or snobbish, uh, especially when we just stick to our inner circle of fellow introverts in those social situations. One way you can overcome this is to really resist the urge to just hang out with your closest friends and make that effort to meet new people. And, and you don't need to be a good talker when meeting new people. You can avoid the dreaded small talk by asking them open-ended questions, something other than the weather. People always appreciate it when genuine interest is shown in them. In this way, your extroverted counterpart can be the center of attention while you lean into your trait of being a listener. When you find common ground with the person you're having a conversation with, you can then begin to share your own thoughts. Just be sure not to overwhelm them with too much information. Nobody wants TMI. That said, don't feel like you need to push yourself into social situations that make you extremely uncomfortable. Charming introverts know their limits and don't overcommit themselves. Honor your need for personal space to recharge. As you expand your comfort zone, you might want to seek out the company of others in small groups, such as a book club, so you don't feel overwhelmed. Introvert power number two, introverts notice details. One generalization in describing how introverts are different than extroverts is that we are observers by nature and extroverts are doers. This helps us in our relationships with others because we notice when there has been even a subtle change in someone. We can use those observation skills to make deep connections with other people, either by giving them a compliment or a word of encouragement. In my work at the university, I had to establish a rapport with people who came to see me for mentoring regarding their teaching or the participants in my workshops almost immediately to gain their trust. Noting details was a great way of starting conversations and putting them at ease. And isn't that one of the bedrocks of charm, putting people at ease? One of the benefits of using details as a first step in a conversation is that I can quickly move beyond the dreaded small talk. I can get to the heart of who the person is and engage them in a deeper, deeper level. As mentioned before, as introverts, we despise small talk despise it. Thankfully, noticing details is a simple way for us to go deep with people and use those listening skills to show them that we value spending time with them. Introvert power number three. Introverts are deep thinkers. Being reflective and analytical are major introvert traits. This enables us to be more empathetic, empathetic as we try to understand others' perspectives and form deeper relationships. Because we tend to take the time to consider what we want to say and how to say it, misunderstandings are less likely to occur. However, and I want you to pay attention to this, a potential downside is that we spend a lot of time in our own inner worlds. I mean, if left to my own devices, I would probably just hang out in my head all day. Like many scholars, I am perfectly content to spend all of my time with my dusty books day in and day out. But that isn't the way life works, and we have to get out of our own heads and interact with people regularly. People that we like and even some people who make it difficult, shall we say, to like them. But this requires me to get out of my head and connect with them. I've learned that being an extra introvert, I'm not an extrovert, I've learned that being an introvert does not preclude me from forming meaningful relationships. 
We may prefer less stimulation and smaller social circles, but we are not exempt from the human need to belong. Though it may require more effort and energy, purposefully en engaging with others is rewarding and helps combat the stereotype of introverts as aloof or snobbish. So to summarize, contrary to the common misconception that introverts can't be charming, introverts possess many qualities that others find appealing. By paying close attention to others, staying within your comfort zone while also gradually pushing outside of it and embracing your strengths as an introvert, you can balance your, you can develop your own brand of charm while also balancing your need for a long time. Being a charming introvert is all about leveraging your natural tendencies to connect with people in meaningful ways. By recognizing introverse, introversion as an asset rather than a hindrance, introverts can lean into their strengths to connect with others in meaningful ways while also honoring their need for alone time. If you're an introvert who wants to step out of your comfort zone without compromising your quiet nature, it's time to start embracing your introverted traits as advantages. Lean into your listening skills, notice the details that others miss, and think deeply about, other, about people's perspectives before sharing your thoughts. With practice and patience, you'll gain the confidence to have engaging conversations, forge meaningful connections, and become the charming introvert you were meant to be. Are you ready to start using your introversion to your advantage? If you're ready to take your personal presentation to the next level by incorporating vintage sewing and timeless charm school advice into your everyday life, I invite you to click on the subscribe and notification buttons to make sure you know when new videos arrive and be sure to check out the other modern retro woman resources in the description. 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 What's description? Also, let YouTube's algorithm know that it should be sh this video should be shared with kindred spirits by clicking the like button and sharing it with your friends. For now, I'm Dr. Julianne McFan with Modern Retro Woman. Have a fabulous Technicolor day. Bye now. Thank you.